All right, uh, so now we're going to introduce one more open method, and this method is called inverse quadratic interpolation. Inverse quadratic interpolation. And uh, it's kind of funny the ordering of these chapters and everything because it's sort of a chicken and the egg problem because one one chapter depends on the other to to really understand everything you sort of need to go through it more than once <laughs> uh, but inverse quadratic interpolation the reason I make that comment is because this word interpolation shows up and we will see in fact that we have a whole another unit on interpolation so we'll get into that a little bit more but inverse uh, quadratic interpolation so what that is is we have let's let's draw our famous axis here and then we have our function so let's say our function looks something like this my favorite function to find the root of um, and then let's say we have uh, um, a point we're gonna start our method we're gonna start out and this is an open method so this is an open method so you start with one point alright so you start with one point and then uh, the idea with the inverse quadratic interpolation so so we already talked about the the secant method right uh, um, well yes the secant method so the secant method took this point and then it sort of perturbed it a bit and then we had a second point and then we used that to approximate the derivative and shoot down and get the root okay with the inverse quadratic interpolation we actually take three points all right so we take three points and actually I don't know let me check I don't know which side they're on well okay so according to them uh, we we actually do three points and and the three points are are you start with the one point and then and then it's it's at least the indices it's using minus two so this would be um, this would be y well we have x and then this would be y um, y i this is y i minus one and this is y i minus two so then correspondingly x i x i minus one and x i minus two okay so th so that's it so that's what we have and, and the idea with inverse quadratic interpolation is that what we do is instead of fitting a line segment and seeing where that in intersects the axis we fit a parabola and see where that in intersects the axis using three points and we fit a parabola now uh, this is sort of tricky here because actually uh, sometimes if we fit a parabola if we were to fit a parabola in X so um, if, if we were to per fit a parabola in X and it depends on the three points these ones aren't that bad but uh, in some cases if you fit a parabola in X the function or that parabola may never intersect the x-axis uh, and so with inverse quadratic interpol interpolation what we do is we fit a quadratic in y so if we were to look at this then we fit a quadratic in y I don't know that isn't really that good of a quadratic um, because because it probably wouldn't be that bad it would probably be more like that uh, and then uh, get rid of that. All right, so you fit a quadratic in y instead of in x, and this actually may converge very quickly, and it avoids the problem that a that a parabola in x would have uh, that may not always cross the x-axis because a function of y will will cross it, whereas a function of x, uh, depending on the points we had, we may have a parabola that that came in here like this let me let me draw a different parabola so you get the right idea here so let's say we had a parabola that came in like this right um, and you see if this is above the x-axis it may never intersect and so there we have a situation where where we're in real trouble um, and and this could actually happen here I mean that that may be a little too uh, why but if it if it uh, if it included anyway so there's a parabola at x squared something, right? Uh, but here we have this y squared, um, and and that 
uh, always crosses the x-axis. So this is the idea behind inverse quadratic interpolation is to take three points so that we can more closely approximate uh, the derivative because we get this uh, well not approximate the derivative but, but we can more closely um, uh, capture the the behavior of the function we can converge quicker uh, because we not only capture sort of the linear behavior of the function we also capture some of the curvature of the function so inverse quadratic interpolation is a fast open method